Hi, this is Steve from Open Flight Solutions, and I'm going to take you through the process of assembling a flight box. Uh, it's fairly easy. It should take you somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. So thank you very much, and without any further ado, here we go. The first thing you'll need is a set of fairly simple tools. The things that I'd recommend are a Phillips screwdriver, preferably one with a magnetic tip. Uh, the magnetic tip will not bother anything. There's no magnetically sensitive parts in a flight box. If you have them, uh, a set of uh, 5 16 inch wrenches really makes it easier to uh, get some of the pieces on. You don't have to have that. You can also just use a, a pair of pliers or an adjustable wrench or something. Um, another thing that you might need if you're going to be putting together a flight box with a remote GPS, which we're going to do in this demo, uh, is a, a box knife or X-Acto knife that you can use to cut the case a little bit because when you install the um, antenna, you need to actually remove a small piece of the plastic. So those are the tools you need. It should be about all you need. Uh, another thing that I recommend is Loctite. So Loctite is a uh, um, well, chemical you use to keep some of the nuts from withdrawing um, when you put together the fan. So that's a, a fourth item. So box knife, Phillips screwdriver, um, pliers or 5 16 wrenches, and some Loctite. And that should be all you need. So here is the uh, flight box box, you know, as it comes from the Postal Service. When you open it up, you'll find that there's a number of things inside. So let's take a quick look. Now it varies a little bit depending on what parts you ordered, because some people order additional components. This, in this case, you'll see there's the flight box case itself, and that contains a number of components. There's the uh, USB power cable you used to power the system. Uh, this one has a remote GPS, which we'll install. There's, of course, the Raspberry Pi computer. Um, there's a data card, which is uh, the, basically the hard drive for the system. Um, and underneath here, you'll find a couple of other things that are important. You'll find the flight box assembly guide. And if you happen to have ordered the uh, um, high-gain antennas, there's also a piece of aluminum tape that you can use to create a ground plane. That's optional, but it's recommended as a, uh, as a means of getting a little bit of additional signal. So, first thing I will suggest is if you haven't read through this guide, please do. Um, it goes through everything sort of step by step. It includes a list of all the parts that should be there, all of the standard parts. Your kit, of course, again, may have some additional. And it shows you know, some, uh, some descriptors so you know what you're looking at when you're looking at the parts. So before we go any further, let's take the box uh, parts out. Let's open it up and see what all we've got inside here. So we have a business card, which you can use if you need to get a hold of us for, uh, for support purposes. There is a small fan, which you connect up to the top of the case. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. There is either one or a pair of these pigtail cables. These are what are used to connect the radio modules, which you'll find in here also, uh, with the antennas. So you'll need to make sure you've got your pigtails and your radio modules. Now, single band will only have one radio module and one pigtail. Dual band will have two radio modules and two pigtails. You'll also have a, uh, a screw kit or hardware kit that has all of the little uh, hardware that you need to put the system together. Since we're going to be installing the remote GPS with this particular kit, we're going to take a moment and actually make a small alteration to the case. So here's our box knife. And you'll notice down here you've got this nice U-shaped channel there. That's actually where the USB connector sits, so it can actually extend out past the case. What we need to do is use the knife to carefully make a couple of small incisions on the side to loosen up this bit of plastic. You can see it kind of comes loose pretty easily. And then make another small cut around the bottom, and that'll pop right out, and you have a nice little U-shaped channel there. Now you can clean it up if you need, if you like, uh, for aesthetic purposes with just that. You can also get some, some small you know, fine grit sandpaper and adjust it so that you've got a, a perfectly U-shaped cut here at the back if you like. So, so the next thing we're going to want to do, since this is going to also have the high gain antennas on it, is put the ground plane into place. So the ground plane fits inside the box and it's uh, relatively straightforward to put in. You have a couple of options for doing it. Um, one, is to, uh, to try and put it along the edge all the way around. Another option is to put it through the center. Now you'll notice when you look down there that it's a little bit longer than the, uh, uh, the box, so you'll need to bend it 
You'll also need to sort of make some cutouts for the, uh, the little um, standoffs that are on the bottom. So there, you can use your knife, you can also use a pair of scissors to uh, trim that out a little bit. So here you see it, and I've made some, uh, some snips to take out some space so that we can actually get the um, metal in over those standoffs. And so once you've got that done, you just want to carefully peel the backing off the tape and lay it into place. And you might want to start you know, just with a section of it. Don't undo the whole thing at once, so you're, it's a little easier to work with. So now that the case is ready, the next thing you're going to want to do is actually assemble the Raspberry Pi and the core components that actually make the flight box do its job. Um, that involves, of course, the Raspberry Pi, which we'll take out of its little static bag. And you're also going to need the radio modules. Now, again, if you have a single band, you'll have one of these. If you have a dual band, you'll have two. Go ahead and take those guys out and set them down here. You'll also be needing to use the uh, pigtail cables, which we have here. And to get ready for using this, you'll want to go ahead and spin the hardware off. And in this case, if you've got both the lock washer, which you see there, and the star washer, we're going to disregard the lock washer. It actually makes it a little bit too thick and go with just the star washer. So you'll have a nut and a star washer for each one of these pigtails. The next thing we want to do before we go any further is actually install the data card. So here you see the flight box data card it is in this little paper envelope. The easiest way to open it is probably just to tear the top off and pull the card out. Once you have the card out, you're going to install it in the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. You'll see the little card slot there. The card just fits face up on the bottom slides in and locks into place. doesn't click or anything, it just sort of hits the back wall and stops. So that's how you install that. The next thing you want to install are your radio modules. So we're going to put the 1090 on the outside edge there. We're going to put the 978 in the center. Now these both go on the bottom row of uh, USB slots there. Then before we go any further, we want to actually put on the pigtail cables. So put the pigtail that goes into the 1090 there, and it's going to route, as you can see, in between the uh, Ethernet connector and this um, USB connector. Then put the 978 pigtail on, and it's going to route along the edge. So when we pop it into the box, you'll need to keep it up out of the way, and then we'll swing it into place when we're uh, ready. The next thing you want to do, since we're going to actually put this in with the um, remote GPS, is take your remote GPS, take the twist tie off, and plug it in to the USB port above the 978 megahertz in the center. So, like so. Then, once you've got those things all put together, we're ready to actually pop it into the box. So, if you look at the inside of the box, You'll see that there's the uh, hole here for the audio connector, there's a partial cutout for the HDMI, and then there's a cutout for the uh, power. I'm going to line those up with the audio connector, the HDMI, and the power. And again, keep the uh, pigtails up and out of the way. Just lay it in at an angle, line those pieces up, and it sits right down and into place. So now that we've got this in, the next thing we're going to do is uh, use a set of the screws out of our hardware kit here. To, uh, to put it into place permanently. So, go ahead and open up the hardware kit. Careful not to lose anything. And for this, we're going to use the small black screws. Now these are, fortunately, uh, ferrous magnetic, so you can use a magnetic screwdriver, which makes it a whole lot easier to put the screws into place. So there, you see all four screws are in place, and we're ready to put the pigtail connectors into place. Now, remember, our uh, 1090 megahertz 
is coming around here and going through, and it's going to come out on this side closest to that 40 pin uh, header that you see there. It's going to go like so, and we're going to have to pop a hole through the um, uh, metal tape we put in there. We want to leave the metal tape around there so that it actually connects because that's how the ground plane actually works, is it contacts that metal and creates a connection. You want to do the same thing over here for the uh, 978 megahertz connector. And once we have these in place, I would recommend you take a Sharpie or something and actually mark 978 next to the 978 megahertz uh, um, bulkhead connector and 1090 next to the 1090. So let's go ahead and put a star washer on. And then we'll put our nut on there. Let's just put my wrenches to tighten them up, get them nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten them though, because you don't want to break the uh, um, connection inside the bulkhead connector. And there you go. We now have it all wired up on that end. So the next thing we're going to do is assemble the fan. So the fan, if you'll see, there's a sticker on one side of it. That sticker goes face down against the plastic. Because what's going to happen is we're going to put our four long screws through these holes. We're going to mount the fan directly to the uh, plastic top for the flight box. Now, this is where the Loctite comes in because you really don't want the uh, fan vibrating loose and dropping into your um, case. That would cause bad things to happen. Happen to get any Loctite on it, be sure to clean that up quickly so it doesn't stain your box. There you go. So now the last really critical step is to actually connect the fan to the pin header. Now you'll look at the instructions in, uh, that came with the box and you'll see where this is supposed to go. But to point it out, you're going to want the red connection going on the second pin on the lower or outer um, uh, row of pins here. And you're going to want the black going on the third. So, take your connector, up, push it down, and it should fit on there without any problem. Then, the last challenge is to just route the cable so that it doesn't foul the fan. You should be able to just kind of loop it around. Now, I've got one more little challenge to overcome when we put in our um, ground plane, we put metal over that, I want to clear it, and you're actually ready to start putting the screws in. Screw assembly is as simple as it gets, just take a screw, put one in this end, I want to make sure that the case is snapped down all the way around clearly, there you go, and one on each side, and there it is. Now, one more optional step is to, again, mark your case so you know which antenna goes on which side. Now, I'll just say it again. We, uh, we ran the UAT connection down the outside edge to this uh, um, bulkhead connector over here. It's the one that's closest to the power jack. And we ran the 970, or the 1090, down between the uh, Ethernet and the USB and around and over here. So I'm just going to put... 1090 and UAT on the bottom there so that I will know which one is which. And we're ready for antennas. So if you ordered the stock kit, you didn't upgrade to the high gain antennas, you should have a pair of antennas that look like this. You'll have one with a pair of yellow bands at the top. That is the 978 megahertz UAT antenna. 
and you'll have a shorter antenna it says new elec and then it says uh, 1090 megahertz on it and that of course is the 1090 megahertz antenna for 1090 es so to attach these you'll simply attach them directly on they screw on like so now if you have this antenna the uh, the one with the yellow bands at the top and it tries to flop over on you that means you don't have it connected tightly enough there um, if that happens you can even remove the star washer that we left on there and go with just the nut that'll give you a little bit more thread and it'll help it stand up better shouldn't have that problem with this other antenna so here we go now that is the flight box with a set of the basic stock quarter wave antennas attached but as I mentioned many people actually uh, have been opting to upgrade to the half wave uh, much larger um, high gain antennas so these guys are labeled around the band they're otherwise absolutely identical so make sure you don't lose the labels or tear those off uh, otherwise you won't know which is which so here's a 1090 megahertz antenna it'll go on this side here's a 978 megahertz antenna it'll go over on this side so to install that same exact procedure just spin these off and spin on the high gains so spin it around so that they're facing up and there you have it, a flight box with high gain antennas and a remote GPS. So that's about it. The next thing you're going to want to do is power it up. So to do that, take the power cable and open it out. And the power cable, of course, goes in over here. Now, the power supply that you use for this is up to you. Uh, it must be 2 amps or greater, otherwise it simply will not work. But any USB power supply that, uh, that you want to use is, uh, is viable, because all USB power supplies are 5 volts. Um, you can use either a remote battery, a portable battery, or you can also use a, uh, a cigarette lighter adapter. So, whichever one you prefer. For doing testing, you can plug it into a um, wall adapter. Uh, preferably if one that again is two amps or greater so uh, a recent iPad tablet um, charger should work fine so I'm gonna go ahead and power this up and you'll see that the fan in there begins to spin and within a few seconds you should find that there's a new Wi-Fi access point available in your uh, your house and it'll be flight box dash and then some random characters which are the unique identifier for your flight box there you go your system is up and ready to test.